Hey Internet, it's David, and I'm here with the verse by verse reference premiere series by Thomas Nelson. This Bible. Oh my gosh. This is a special one, you guys. This is special. I don't know if you heard me. This is a special Bible. My goodness. Got it in a couple days ago. I was expecting it to be kind of like, you know, the first one. This is their running from last year when they first started coming out. And so I was expecting it to feel like the last one with maybe a little bit better ribbons. But I opened this thing up and it was all wrapped in paper. So I took it out of the paper, which if you're interested, it's really nice black paper. And as soon as I took it out of the paper and it went in my hand, I was just shocked. I was speechless. Like, I don't even know how to do the review right now. This is one of the most amazing special Bibles I have ever felt in my life. And guys, I have some Bibles. Like, no kidding. I have some Bibles. I have stacks of Allens, um, mostly from Chant. I have stacks of Skylers, Cambridge, um, the new Steadfast, uh, well, it's just, I have some Bibles. I've seen some Bibles, used some Bibles, written in some Bibles, sniffed some Bibles in my day. And I'm like, how do I do a review? I don't even have anything to compare it to. I have like no grid for this thing. This just like is in a class of its own. I wouldn't say it's better than Skylar, but I would say it's different without being less than Skylar. It's just different, it's like, it just, I don't know, I, I was shocked. I was shocked, okay. I don't know what to say. This is just an amazing Bible. Review's over. Maybe not, I gotta get the shots, I'll tell you about it, but I'm just like, <laughs> my goodness, this Bible's so special and amazing. When you touch one and feel it in your hand, like the camera stuff, like you'll see what it looks like, but until you get one in your hand, you won't understand. You'll just be like, man, this guy is really ranting on a video. Go watch my other Bible reviews if you have it. And if you're watching this one, you've probably seen some of my other Bible reviews. I've never done this. Like there's, I've seen some nice Bibles, but this is just like, ridiculously good and what's more shocking is that they're only about a hundred bucks average sometimes you can find them in the 90s sometimes you find them at like 110 113 this is a special edition that will be a historical special edition i'm like talking this thing up so much but it's because i, I just i don't know how to talk about this bible it's amazing I've been like carrying it around with me since I got it, snuggling with it, and I just finished marking in a passage that I'll show you with the pages and the ghosting and all that stuff. And it's just tremendous. You're probably tired of this intro already, so let me get to it. And I hope that I can find words for this thing. <laughs> Cause it's just, this is the softest cover. I don't know, like some of you might've seen some of the older vid videos where I talk about my wife's um, Skylar PSQ that's just got like the most amazing feeling leather and I don't have a Skylar like that where it's just like man it feels like salamander skin like it's just it's so smooth and soft and squishy it's amazing I'm just like with this Bible and this new pair of flip-flops that I got reefs r-e-e-f these are the most amazing flip-flops I've had in my life. So I just got these squishy flip-flops. And then in comes this squishy Bible. You guys, I am in squishy heaven. Squishy soft stuff heaven. The flip-flops aren't leather tops, but they're just like, they're squishy and they're so good to walk in. And so it's like squishy for my feet. And then this is squishy for my hands. And I've just been walking around like all day feeling the squish, reading the squish. Anyway, I don't even know how to describe this cover. They say it's goat skin, but this is like, eternal goat skin from outer space or something. This is God's kind of goat skin. I just, I don't know what to say about this cover.
I don't know what the liner is, but it's got a line and an interior gilt line, which I've become so used to. It's like if it doesn't have an interior gilt line that frames the pages, it just, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, you can, maybe you can tell I'm having a hard time with this interview because this Bible is so good. I'm just, you guys, I'm shocked. So I'm going to try to get through this. I have my coffee. First, I'm going to pick up the first premiere I have, which came out last year. And so this is the, uh, the double column paragraph format. Um, similar binding, similar fill, but there's just stuff on this one where it's like, ooh, wow. What I'm just going to point out is the obvious differences here. Um, I'm going to look at typeface with this and some of their other editions at the end of the video. But uh, you can see here the uh, new edition. They got rid of the uh, gold spine thingies. I don't know the technical term, but they're using the uh, raised hubs. I am a sucker for raised hubs on the spine and so just if you're gonna put raised hubs on your edition I'll probably end up with it but uh, I just love the raised hubs. So they put that on the new Premiere series but then also on this first one they use single-sided satin ribbons which uh, I don't know for like a Premiere Bible it just it seemed out of place. Um, but for this year they updated them so the ribbons are the same color on the black, two black and one really dark red ribbon, but they're double faced satin. They're not Beresford's, they're a little bit stiffer than Beresford's ribbon if you're used to the Allen and the Schuyler ribbons, but it's nice to have them double sided and I'm not going to mess with them. I like the tastefulness of the color combo that they have on here. So that's really the biggest difference. I'm still not used to the cover. Every time, even though I felt it and I touch it again after not handling it for a couple hours, I'm like, wow, this is better than I remember from when I held it last time. Um, anyway, the cover is just stupid shocking. Like, it's just amazing. Um, got your presentation pages. What uh, I like about this one is the classic format. So not just the quality of the binding, but the format of this one, I think just everything they have going on in this guy, it just screams like instant classic. This is going to be a historical edition that is going to be remembered, I think. And so anyway, it is a verse by verse double column with center column reference, but they got rid of the borders. So if you're familiar, I don't know which crossway edition it is because I don't have many crossways but the Allen ESV readers, how they don't have the border around the center column and the ESV one. Uh, they got rid of that, which it, it works because it's line matched, like everything's line matched. And so the spacing, like everything just works so nice. The typeface is just so beautiful. Um, verse by verse, um, especially as a teacher, is very useful to me. And so I tend to gravitate towards verse by verse Bibles that I study and teach in. Bibles that I just want to read through quickly, um, I'll stick to the paragraph format. And so my preferred, when I look at a typeface, my preferred typeface is a double column center reference. Some of them are done better than others. This is one of the best ones I've seen. The Lockman one that they have, um, and they use it for the Allen readers. It's then the Steadfast. Um, the Allen has better paper than the Lockman or the Steadfast, but uh, that typeface is amazing um, for the large print ultra thin for their reference Bible, but it's only a new American standard. And so to have something like this, again, a new King James, that's just as good, or I might even say like better than that typeface, it's such a treasure. Because I use the new King James almost as much as the New American Standard. But here, I mean, it's just, it's a gorgeous typeface. And uh, I'll get into comparing this one with what else is available from Thomas Nelson at the end of the video, but it's just perfect. It's not crowded, but it's not too spread out. It's just a beautiful typeface, very readable, and I just, I love everything about it. I really do. I love it. Um, it is red letter which I prefer black letter, but I'll get over it. When you have typefaces that are contrasted in the black letter areas with red verse numbers, 
um, red headings, red book titles at the top of the page. When you have that contrast and then you go into the red letter, um, you kind of lose that that contrast and it's almost like the red letter sinks behind the reading. That is my only critique of this one, is I wish there was at least a black letter option for people that prefer black letter, but there was not. So I went with the red letter and it's okay. It doesn't ruin my day. I can enjoy a red letter too, because I wish there was a black letter edition. But if one came out because I have this one already, I probably won't get it. I'll just stick with this one, especially since I wrote in it already. <laughs> but just an amazing typeface. There's good enough margins which are okay for notes and cross-referencing. It's not the best that I've seen, but it would be nice because it is a verse by verse, it can be more of a teaching study Bible. Um, I would, would have liked to see notebook paper in the back. Um, and I really like Allen's style of notebook paper, just that thicker paper, smaller lines, and especially on that old uh, 32 GSM Allen readers where there was a double column um, line notebook paper in the back. I would love to see something like that complement an edition like this. I would give up the concordance for something like that. But I know there's people that want concordances in their Bibles, even though I don't use concordances in the Bibles. This one has one, and that's real nice and stuff. They come in handy sometimes, but for the most part, with smartphones and you can Google stuff so quickly, and then having full exhaustive concordances in my library, it's just like, I don't even, I don't even bother with these things. Uh, to me, that's just kind of like, fluff that makes the Bible seem bigger or it gives you more of a pad to hold on to when you're reading Revelation and you're coming to the end of the book. Um, so I appreciate it for that, but I don't use them. Uh, but it does have a concordance and maps. And then they have a nice little letter in here on how they develop the typeface. So it's kind of a familiar typeface for them that's been refined, and I must say, like, the typeface is killer in a good way. It's so amazing, like, it's gonna kill the devil, this typeface is. If you're predominantly a New King James user, and you're, like, looking for the one, like, please just do yourself a favor, look no farther. This one tops the charts by a long shot because of the quality and the typeface. It's just useful all around. Like, I can sit down and read it, I can teach from it and all those things. Now, for just a size comparison, I have the New American Standard Credo, so I'm assuming this is about the size of your typical quintels that are coming out now with the 28 GSM paper. So it's thicker than the thin line, but it's thinner than the New King James Quintel that I have. So I'm using this one because if you order the new 28 GSM Quintels, I think it's gonna be about this size. Beth or anyone, if you guys do see this from Evangelical Bible, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Anyway, so there's the Credo and this one. Very similar footprint, same, same size Bible. Um, if you're one that's looking at getting a new King James and you're torn between the Schuyler and this Thomas Nelson, um, both of them are at the top of their game as far as just quality. The quality and the construction of it, they're different. They're like, like I said at the beginning of the video, I can't compare these two. They just, they, they really don't compare. They're like, whatever genre they're in, they're both at the top. Um, they both feel completely different. The leather's completely different. I absolutely love Skylar. No one has been consistent like they have in the recent years. Like when you get a Skylar Bible, you know you're getting something incredible. What makes the Skylar stand out is just the paper um, in my mind. Even though things are different, the paper and the Skylar is just a nice French milled. Both of them are line matched and so it makes for just a great reading experience without too much distraction getting in there. When you look at the Quintel format, you're looking at a double column paragraph and you have your cross references at the bottom and you have your translator notes on the outside corners of the pages. This is why I love the Quintel so much. It's a beautiful format to read through and I spend the majority of my time reading through the Quintel format, uh, but I don't mark it up as heavily um, I don't study in the quintels. It's just more of like a quick read and just a quick markings, maybe with a yellow highlighter. Um, I explain 
like how I mark this one in one of my recent videos, uh, uh, how I mark my Bible update video. But that's the format you're getting with the Quintil. Um, the opacity um, seems just as good as the Quintel when you open it up, um, but there is a different feeling to the paper and the Thomas Nelson. The Schuylers just have French mill paper that I think just sets it above where the Nelson paper is at. But the opacity is still uh, really, really good. I think it's equal there. Um, you have a little bit kind of cooler toned white. You don't have the blue hues like you do in the Lockman editions. Um, but it is a cooler toned white page compared to the Schuyler. So, I mean, there's minor differences like that, but overall, you're really looking at the format. Like, do you want a paragraph format? And the Quintels are just amazing to read, especially if you do use the translator notes like I do. Very efficient system to read through. I love the Quintel. I can't say enough good things about it. Or the Thomas Nelson, like if you're on the fence. Again, looking at both of these, like which one should I get? And the Thomas Nelson is your verse by verse uh, center column, which is traditional, but it's been marked out in a way that it's been a very efficient uh, system to get to the translator notes, get to the cross references. Um, it's just a, it's a familiar system for many of us. And so both of these are just dreams to read, they're dreams to use. The quality is just second to none. Um, but again, as far as the actual construction, they're just like, you can't, I can't compare them. They're both just, they're both amazing. Because I know there's going to be a lot of you that are trying to decide between the two. And really it just comes down to the typeface that's going to be more useful to you. Yeah, there's about a hundred dollar difference between the two. When you put the Skylar up to this, then the hundred dollar difference, like you, you can see it. But at the same time, like this is just so different and mind blowing that it's, it's just, I don't know what to say. I'm just moving on because this is a long video. Now another popular edition with New King James users um, is the Cambridge Wide Margin. This is an older one, so it has the flat spine. Um, the newer ones come with the rounded spine, um, but just so you know kind of what you're looking at. But still same, same size footprint. So I'll just put this up to the Cambridge Wide Margin. You can see the top to bottom length is about the same, but the difference in the size is just going to be the wide margins or not. And then I have friends that I know teach from a wide margin, and I used to teach from this one, but I just, I can't anymore. The font is so small, and like with the paragraph stuff, I get, I just, I get so lost in it. And so I want to show you the difference in the typeface, so that you'll be like, wow. You do lose your capacity for notes on the side, which is the bummer, but like that's what notebooks are for sometimes, you know? But this verse by verse with the big old stinking font is just amazing. It's a dream. And so if you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller than the wide margin, that is easy to teach from, this would be your guy. And so you can see the difference um, between the font size there. The last thing I want to do is, um, so I should look up the name of that. Oh my gosh! I just, have you ever been filming a YouTube video and then all of a sudden you get a text from someone who you're supposed to be at an appointment with? I had to bolt and so I apologize if the lighting might be a little bit different. I'm just going with the same settings and gonna pick up where we were at. But I had to go to my appointment, bless the Lord, at the barbecue place downtown. But, redeeming little quality, at there they have a half price books and they have another bookstore, two awesome bookstores like, right there next to each other. So I went there and I got nothing, but it was fun to look. 
Anyway, so I'm back. What I want to get into now is the typeface of these. Oh my gosh. <sighs> this thing is just so soft. <laughs> it surprises me every time. Anyway, uh, what I want to get, get into is the typeface with you guys on this one. I already kind of showed you the Quintel. Um, if you're a new King James fan, you might be looking at their thin line. Um, they have it in a beautiful brown that I have not seen. I have the brown in the Preachers, but it's a little bit different these days, I hear. But I wouldn't know anything about that one. But this uh, thin line reference Bible in the Premier is a paragraph format. And uh, paragraph formats are nice. And then you have your references and your translator notes all on the bottom of the page. This new verse by verse reference just seems like less crowded. And it's just, to me, I'm gonna be using this one way more. But there's uh, the difference between the typeface, between that uh, thin line double column reference and this new verse by verse reference. Now, I wanted to briefly show you that. But what I want to uh, show you as well is how does this stack up to the Preacher's Bible? Because this is a Preacher's Bible, or what do they call it? Preaching Bible from Thomas Nelson and New King James. And it's a preaching because it's verse by verse. And so the font in the Preaching Bible is a little bit bigger. The margins are narrower though, so you can't write in like cross references and stuff. But it is bigger font, so there's still kind of a nice, you know, having this on the pulpit. Um, you have the uh, references and the translator notes down at the bottom, just like uh, that other Thomas Nelson I showed you. And I think the Quintel is a better setup, but the Quintel is not verse by verse. This is verse by verse. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the Preaching Bible typeface and the uh, verse by verse center column reference Bible. New King James. And you might like the Preaching Bible. I wish they did the Preaching Bible in the Premier Series, but they don't. So um, there's a lot of wonderful things about the Preaching Bible, which you can see on that review, but it is definitely not the Premier Series. Of all three of the Thomas Nelson typefaces, and as someone who teaches on a regular basis, like, I like this typeface. If you're a New King James guy, again, just like, this is your one. This is your one or New King James Girl. Like, this is your one. I know that's a bold statement, but you just get one in your hands and you'll understand. This is the one. The other thing that I just realized I missed was at the front of the books. In this one, you have quick intros into books, which I like. I'm not so much of a study Bible user, even though I have tons of study Bibles. Um, the quick kind of summations and introductions into the books are a, a neat thing and different publishers do them in different ways and so uh, I enjoyed those uh, presentations before each book. The last thing I will show you is a page that I wrote on before this review so that you can see like how it takes the highlighters and look at the uh, ghosting and all those things on the other page. So I marked up a spot in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, and I do use Sharpie yellow highlighters, Bix for colors, and Pigma Microns for the pens. And if you're wondering like why the heck do you use such bold highlighters, I explain it in my How I Mark My Bible update video that you can go see on the channel as well. But anyway, so those are the same highlighters that are used here. The opacity on this is just killer. And all their stuff is line matched. Line matching just needs to be a new normal. It just needs to be a non-negotiable. If you're gonna come out with something, it should just be line matched. But the opacity of the paper and the line matching on this just, it's mind blowing. But uh, anyway, here's Second Th Timothy 2 and just a short little section. I love this section of scripture. I love it all, but this is the one I marked for the video. Also, if you're wondering what colors like everything means, then uh, I cover that as well in my How I Mark My Bible update video, and it's the last key that I talk about that goes in the Bibles that I study from and preach from. Man, so that's it. 
This Bible is just so distractingly good. It's just soft, like I wanna cuddle with it and take it with me everywhere. I know you'll enjoy it. <laughs> and for the price point, it's just like, oh my goodness. I say that a, a lot, because a lot of people are doing really good things with the price point, but I'm sorry if it's a little much. I'm petting the Bible. The cover is soft, you guys. The cover is so soft. I do read my Bibles. I don't just pet vi Bibles and film Bibles. I read my Bible. I love my Bible. Anyway, I'm just like wondering what's going through people's minds now that they're seeing me like pet this one. But you should get it. When you get it, you'll understand and you'll want to pet it too. You'll just want to like scrunch up the cover and you'll, you too can go to Squishy Heaven. So thanks for joining me for another video. Um, if you like the music or any of the music playing underneath any of my videos, it's all available for download at forloveoftheword.bandcamp.com and it's all written and recorded with the mindset of I want something to undergird the main task at hand, undergird prayer, undergird Bible study, uh, meditation in the scripture. And so uh, if you haven't done any of those things to just nice, slow moving ambient music, try it out. I have the playlist on the YouTube channel that you can go to different albums. I do have a new album coming out soon. It will be called Hearing Love. It carries the name of the book that will be released soon as well. So if you're looking for that, I know I said beginning of December. It doesn't look like it's gonna be beginning of December. I think we still need another couple months of work in it before it's uh, released to the public in the wild. I'm really excited for the book to come out. The instrumental album will be coming out um, at the same time with the book and they're both gonna be titled Hearing Love. And so maybe that'd be a good time to get an instrumental album too. Like get the book, get the album that kind of goes with the book and there you have a soundtrack to read too, is kind of my thinking. But anyway, that will be coming out soon. Um, if you would like to support my family in full-time ministry, I would love it and be honored if you would pray about supporting us over on Patreon. The link will be in the description and even just for as little as $2 a month um, is a huge blessing to my family and helps us stay focused on the things that the Lord has called us to stay focused on. And we're just so thankful for the uh, past and present patrons who have been such a support to uh, me and my family. And just thank you guys so much and enjoy these final shots of this beautiful squishy Bible and remember, like this camera is not gonna do this Bible justice. You gotta get one in your hands. That's all I suppose. So, bye internet.